Hi everyone, this is Denise with In Liquid Color and I'm really excited that I get to surprise you with a little extra bonus video before the holidays. I didn't think I'd be able to squeak it in there, but I was able to. Uh, but you will have to excuse my hoarse voice. I woke up sick today, uh, but I still wanted to get this recording out um, early on in the week. So uh, today we're going to be taking a look at granulating pigments. Um, this is probably a term that you've heard before, and many artist quality paints will even list a granulation rating on their paints. It may be confusing to understand what causes granulation or how to harness those properties in a positive way, um, so I wanted to take a look at that today. Now some people love granulation and other people hate it. So I for one really disliked it when I first began painting with watercolors and I specifically looked for paints that did not granulate. Um, I probably still prefer the silky smooth texture of non-granulating paints overall, but I've really come to appreciate um, that they definitely have their place and can really help by adding texture to your painting. So first off, let's talk about what granulation means in regards to watercolors. Simply put, granulation is the textured or speckled appearance that are exhibited by some paint pigments. But if we take a more in-depth look, first I want to make sure that we understand what watercolors are composed of. They are made up between primarily a pigment and a binder, which means there's like a powdered color, and then there's also the vehicle that allows it to adhere, adhere to the paper. The binder in watercolors is gum arabic, while in acrylic it's polymer, and in oils it's linseed oil. Granulation is generally only observed in watercolors because they're transparent, and it's caused when the coarser and heavier pigment particles separate from the gum arabic binder as the paint dries on your paper. The appearance or amount of granulation exhibited by a particular paint can be caused by a number of factors. First and foremost, by the specific pigment that is made up to use the paint. It can also be affected by the water used in the paint mixture, the brand, quality, or composition of that paint, and the paper that you use. So let's take a look at each of those. Earth colors and many shades of blue granulate. These pigments are all formed using actual minerals found on earth that are ground up and added to paints to make them colorful. These natural particles tend to be larger and denser than man-made pigments or dyes, so they granulate more readily. In comparison, non-granulating pigment particles are so small that they are more consistent when they're applied to your paper and it's hard to notice them separating from their binders. Some examples of granulated pigments uh, include PBR7, which makes up any of the sienna and umbers, so raw sienna, burnt sienna, raw umber, burnt umber, um, ultramarine, which is made from PB29, and cerulean, PB35, are all examples of granulating colors. Some examples of non-granulating colors might be um, like your Hansa yellows, quinacridone rose, thalo blue, and a number of other pigments. As we said before, granulation is caused when the pigment separates from the binder. Therefore, when you add more water into your paint mixture, there will be more granulation apparent on your paper. The brand of paint will also affect the appearance of the granulation, and by that I mean that the brand will reflect both the composition and the quality of the paints. Student quality paints have less pigment and more binder, which will result in less granulation. More artist quality paints are more likely to granulate because they have more pigments used in them. The most granulating paints that I've worked with come from Daniel Smith, and in fact this entire mini palette that I've put together today are Daniel Smith paints. However, if you don't like granulating paints and you'd like to find some artist quality paints without that quality, many that include honey, such as Mission Gold, Imagram, or Schmincke, there's others as well, have a lot less granulation than Daniel Smith, even when you're directly comparing the same pigment, such as Ultramarine. Finally, the type of paper that you use will also change the appearance of the granulation, but honestly, I haven't done enough testing to give you a very specific recommendation here. I can tell you that high quality cotton rub paper like Arches will always give you a more consistent wash and flow than cheaper watercolor papers made with wood pulp and have extra sizing in them. For this color chart, I'm using 140 pound Arches cold pressed paper with Daniel Smith paints. I pulled the paints directly from my collection that exhibited more granulation, and these happen to be paints that I don't use as often, and many of them are brand new to my collection. They're all granulated earth tones with the exception of ochre and indigo, which only granulate ever so slightly, but I needed a light and a dark to round out my set, and they still fit within the overall color palette I was going for. The rest vary in their amount of granulation from raw sienna exhibiting very little granulation to the transparent brown oxide which has an extreme amount of granulation. 
After the color chart plays out, I'm gonna go ahead and swatch out a couple of specific colors and talk to you guys about non-granulating granulating colors versus granulating colors and how to make non-granulating colors granulate. Uh, I'm also going to be doing a small sketch, um, so stay tuned for that. So here I'm going to be swatching out a few different colors for you to see, starting with phthalo blue, which is a very um, strong, intense color with very fine paint particles, so it does not tend to granulate. Now the paper that you use will affect the quality. Um, in this one I'm using the Strathmore paper, which is not high quality like the Arches, so it's going to react a little bit differently. And the difference between wet and dry is quite drastic when you're looking at these granulating properties, so I'll show that in just a minute. The next color I'm going to swatch out is French Ultramarine, and French Ultramarine is a moderately granulating pigment that is very common, especially amongst uh, landscape painters, due to its granulating properties and helping to create texture in a natural setting. The last color that I'm going to swatch out is Transparent Brown Oxide, and I had no idea when I bought this color how intensely granulating it would be and it starts to granulate almost immediately once you put it on the paper. Um, there is a much larger shift between when it's more heavily concentrated, like you can see at the top, and when you uh, dilute it down with more water at the bottom, you can see how there is a lot of pigment that falls into those little crevices of the paper. So if you have a pigment that does not granulate like phthalo blue and you would like it to granulate, there's something called granulation medium. It's by Winsor Newton. And when you add this to your paint, it will actually cause your paint to granulate. Now, um, the amount that you add, of course, will affect how much it granulates. And I don't know exactly how the science behind it works. But if I had to guess, I would think that there's something in the medium that latches onto those pigments and has them separate more from the water. Here the paints are all dry, and I'm going to show you them from left to right as we did on our swatch. So it's phthalo blue, ultramarine, transparent brown oxide, and then the phthalo blue with the granulation medium so that you can see them close up. everyone I hope this was helpful thank you so much for tuning in and watching and I hope this helps clarify any questions that you may have had about granulating pigments um, just as a couple housekeeping reminders I currently have a giveaway going on in my previous video so you'll want to check that out if you'd like a chance to win a sketch of mine uh, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook for regular updates and also check out the description below for links to the products that I use in today's video Remember, any purchases that you make on Amazon through my associates links below, no matter what the item is, will help my channel out by donating a small percentage of that sale. It doesn't cost you any extra. I'm going to have a little watercolor sketch here, close out the video of a little forest scene showing off the properties of the granulating pigments. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I will see you next time.